Osteoporosis is a worldwide problem of immense magnitude. In the 1990s, there were about 1.7 million hip bone fractures worldwide, two-thirds of these being women. Osteoporosis is mainly found in highly industrialized countries, the United States, for example. There are about 15 to 20 million people that currently have osteoporosis, and unfortunately 50,000 of these people die each year. According to South Dakota Rural Bone Health Study, a strong connection exists between genetics and bone size and density. The strength of the genetic link varies slightly between different parts of the skeleton, but also generally strong throughout the body. The strength of this connection also applies equally to both men and women with a few minor variations of age. Recent research indicates that up to 75% of, di of the difference in bone mass and density due to genetics is the result of a change in a single gene. I'm Dr. Vassal. I teach chemistry here at Del Mar College, various chemistry classes, basic chemistry, general chemistry, and organic chemistry. I would say I get most of my calcium from cheese and milk. From mostly dairy products? Dairy products, yes. Well, first I'd ask you to prove it, but, uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I really would take it, you know, I would need in more information, basically. More information before I would believe you. Yes, I think so. Yeah. And did you know that 50,000 uh, Americans die each year of uh, complications related to osteoporosis? No, I did not know that part. How would you think that that is possible? Do you think it, would you think it would come from dairy or would you think it would come from genetics? genetics? I think... Uh I think genetics. I think there are definitely some people who are more uh, prone to osteoporosis. And um, okay, let me ask you this: Do you think, or how often do you drink milk like daily? Uh, I would say weekly. I drink milk probably three to four times per week. Three to four times per week. Three to four times per week. Yeah. And what what kind of milk is it? One percent. Dairy milk. 1% dairy milk? Yes. Okay. According to the Dietitian Guide to Vegetarian Diets, a recent study involved 50,000 male health professionals in the United States found that men six feet and taller were more likely to experience hip fractures than men 5'9 or shorter. Somewhat related to height, recent work shows that the length of hip axis is related to fracture risk with longer length increasing risk. Hip axis length has increased during the past few decades, an occurrence that may be related to better nutrition early in life. Mmm, baby. Actually, no. From their statement before, I don't believe I'm prone to osteoporosis. I don't have a family history. My bones are good. There's nobody in my family who has ever had it, and I don't intend to have it. I, I don't you, believe you I'm going to have you it. Basically, you've been drinking milk since you were born, right? I've been drinking milk since I was born. And, but and you would say you're doing pretty good? I'm doing pretty good. Based on a result of a five-year study of young adult women, a calcium intake of 800 milligrams in active women can cause an experience of 5 to 10 times increase in spinal bone mineral density relative to sedentary women. Even moderate exercise appears to be beneficial. In postmenopausal women, simply walking between 1 and 1.5 one miles per day was associated with a reduced rate of bone loss. According to Heaney and Recker from JLab Medical Clinic, Caffeine increases bone loss. In a recent study of postmenopausal women consuming an amount of caffeine contained in two to three cups of brewed coffee, 
That's equivalent to five to seven ser servings of instant coffee and 800 milligrams of calcium. Bone loss was significantly increased. One six ounce serving of coffee causes a negative calcium balance of 4.6 milligrams a day. Approximately 40 milligrams of calcium are needed to offset the negative effect of one serving of coffee. Boom, suckers. All right, so we have this graph showing the correlation between milligrams per day on calcium consumption for countries and the hip rate fracture of, um, in hundreds and thousands of people. So as you can tell, uh, countries like Finland, Sweden, and Holland, the high dairy consumption countries, have a lot of calcium intake. And um, you can correlate it with the hip fractures per thousands of people, and it's astonishing how high the United States is uh, comparable to our calcium intake in milligrams per day, which is around 1,000 per person. Of course. Yeah, but but seriously, um, I, I do agree that it's probably more genetic than uh, nutrition based. I think nutrition definitely helps, and that's why calcium supplement is a big deal. Yeah, man. I'm feeling. Dude, throw me a beat, man. Throw me a beat. Right Osteoporosis, a disease widely known. Don't drink that milk, especially with those hormones. We're about to get real, so sit back and listen. Make sure to pay attention to the dairy in your kitchen. My name is Ali D, and I drink that milk. But when I drink that milk, I prefer that silk. Now it's time to wrap it up, so remember what we said. Don't do that dairy or you'll end up dead. All right, Scotty. I'll see you later, bro.